everyone. So today we're going to talk about 10 common mistakes beginner horseback riders make. But before we get started, why don't you comment down below what your riding goals are with your horse and what you want to accomplish in the future. And if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos. So today we're talking about common mistakes beginner horseback riders make. So no judgment here at all, we've all made mistakes. We are all still making mistakes for the more experienced riders out there. So today I wanna to address some mistakes that beginner riders make, but that may not always be addressed. So the first mistake we're gonna talk about that beginner horseback riders make is that they rely on their reins for balance. So what I mean by this is that the rider may be trying to pull themselves forward or balance themselves by yanking on the reins and having that pressure on the reins. If you watch a beginner rider post trot, you'll see that they're like this and they're trying to pull themselves up with their reins. But that can make the horse really upset and it's also causing you to pitch forward or pitch yourself backward rather than being balanced over the horse. So instead of riding like this when you're trying to balance, you can sit back and sit over the center of your horse for your balance. Your balance is gonna come from your core so these are muscles that you're gonna to need to build. So one great exercise to combat this is to ride without your reins. So you can stick your hand straight out to the side and this will force you to focus on balancing over your horse and sitting in the saddle correctly. So just disclaimer, make sure you have someone leading your horse or an experienced person lunging your horse as you do this just so you can maintain control of the horse while you ride without reins. Riding mistake number two not releasing pressure when your horse responds correctly. So this is one of the foundations of horse training. Horses learn by pressure and release. So if you can understand this concept, you'll be much better at working with your horse. So what this means is if I apply my pressure, so let's say I'm turning my horse, so I'll apply my pressure by opening my hand and my horse turns his head, that's correct. So in order for the horse to understand that that's correct, I release the pressure. So this is how horses learn. So if you're a beginner, you may find yourself holding this and then you just keep holding the pressure no matter what the horse does. So a perfect example of this is asking your horse to stop. So what I see a lot of riders do is they'll ask the horse to stop by pulling back on the reins, but once the horse has stopped, they don't release that pressure. They hold the same pressure on the reins and this then causes the horse to walk backwards. So the rider's getting frustrated that the horse is going backwards but in reality, the horse is just responding to what the rider is asking. So if you are finding yourself getting frustrated with your horse, the first thing you should do is look to yourself to see if you're doing anything that may be causing the horse to react a certain way. So if my horse is backing up when I want them to stand, I need to first look at myself to make sure I'm not subconsciously telling them to back up. So for our third mistake, it's putting your foot too far into the stirrup. So the correct placement for your stirrup is on the ball of the foot. So kind of right behind your toes, where your toes meet your foot. I see many beginner riders putting their foot in the stirrup up to where the heel of their boot is. So there are a few reasons you don't wanna do this. The first reason is for your own safety. So when your foot is this far into the stirrup, your foot can get caught in the stirrup. If you're to fall or dismount, your toes will come up to the top of your stirrup and block your foot from being able to slip out. So this can be really dangerous. Riders have been dragged by the stirrup like this, and that's why you wanna keep the stirrup on the ball of your foot. So another reason you ride with the stirrup on the ball of your foot is so you can properly stretch around your horse and stretch your legs down. And this will help center yourself over your horse properly. While when you put your stirrups right in front of your heel, you're gonna kinda of get pitched forward like this. So that's an important thing. If you have posture issues when it comes to riding, make sure your stirrup is on the ball of your foot. So mistake number four is gripping with your heels. So as you ride your horse, there should be three areas that make contact with your horse. Your seat, your thighs, and your lower leg. So right here, I'll have touching the horse. Unfortunately, when you first start riding, you may find that you add another point of contact, which is your heels. And you grip your horse with your heels like this. So there's a few reasons you don't want to do this. The most obvious reason is you don't want your horse to think you're telling them to go forward and then they're going to take off. So sadly, I've seen that happen to quite a few people 
where they're going to start pinching and gripping with their heels. And then the horse is like, oh, they're telling me to go faster. And then it's a bad situation because the horse does what they think is right. And then the rider's freaking out. Make sure you're sitting up straight and that your weight is being stretched down and around your horse. So you may find that your natural instinct when your horse starts to go faster or maybe get a little anxious is you want to grip with your heels and your legs. And you do that because it makes you feel more secure. But in reality, you want to make sure in those situations you're thinking of focusing your weight down into your heels and breathing deep. So breathing deep just naturally helps you relax and it naturally helps you sit back on your horse and allows you to think through the situation of putting your weight down and around your horse rather than gripping. Another reason you don't want to grip with your heels is because now your heels are up and your stirrups can easily fall off. And so I remember being a new rider and it seemed like I was losing my stirrups every time I rode. And so that's one of the reasons you may be losing your stirrups is because your heels are up, you're gripping your horse, and so your stirrup is falling off your foot. So mistake number five is pinching with your knees. So when you first start horseback riding, you may feel like you need to grip your horse in order to stay on. So part of that gripping is gripping with your knees. So in reality, what you should do is sit up, sit back, stretch your weight through your heels, and then just naturally by doing that, you will notice that your knees are off of your saddle. So what it will feel like is just my, the inside of my knee is gonna be just lightly touching my saddle. It's not gripping. It's basically just laying against the saddle. So if you take your hand and stick it right here, I could easily slip my hand out. But when you squeeze with your knee, I can't get my hand out of there. So that's an indication that this is the wrong posture and the wrong position on the horse. So there are a few reasons of why you shouldn't grip with your knee when you horseback ride. The first reason is that it makes your leg swing, your lower leg. So if you notice, if you grip with your knee, your lower leg, you lose all control of it. It's very hard to keep it still. I see this most when it comes to post trotting or trotting on a horse. I notice that a lot of beginner riders have a hard time controlling their legs. The reason for this is the trot is a new gait and it can feel kind of bouncy. So just naturally, they're gripping with their knees to stay on the horse. This causes their lower leg to swing. So when they relax and focus their weight down, then they're gonna have much more control of that lower leg. So another reason you don't wanna grip with your knees is because when I grip with my knees, look how far I can get popped out of the saddle. Okay, so this is how you get bucked off. I remember when I first started riding lessons, my instructor was just talking with me and she noticed I was gripping with my knees. So she said, well, make sure you're not gripping with your knees because if the horse bucks, you're probably gonna fly off. Well, sure enough, like five minutes later, the horse bucked and I flew off and she came back and she said, well, you shouldn't have been gripping with your knees. So when I grip with my knees, like I said, look how far I can get shot out of the saddle. There's a lot of distance between here and here, right? But when I relax down, keep my weight down, weight focused down and I'm sitting correctly, it's going to be hard to pop me out of the saddle. So another reason you don't want to grip with your knees is because this will make you lose your stirrups. So we talked about how gripping with your heels will make you lose your stirrups. It's the same concept really. Grip with my knees, my leg swings back, uh-oh, my stirrup came off. So that's something to be aware of as well. If you're losing your stirrups, you may be gripping with your heels or gripping with your knee. So mistake number six is looking down at the ground as you ride. So every rider I've ever known has at some point or another had a problem with looking down at the ground as they rode. So when you ride a horse, you naturally want to look ahead to where you're going. So I don't know how many of you know how to drive, but I remember when I was taught how to drive, I was taught to look ahead between the lines of where I wanted to go on the road. So in the beginning, as I was learning, I would look right at the road ahead of me and I would have to be turning the wheel all the time because I would notice that these turns were coming up and I wasn't prepared. So same thing as you ride a horse, you wanna look up where you're going so you can prepare ahead of time for whatever obstacle you're gonna come across. So when you're riding your horse and you're looking forward to where you're going, you're gonna be riding your horse more confidently compared to if you're riding looking at the ground. So first of all, your horse can feel you looking down at the ground. When I look at the ground, I kind of, my shoulders drop and I pitch forward a little bit. So they'll feel that, but secondly, 
Horses are prey animals. They're constantly looking for things that may pose a threat to them. So if I'm looking down and I'm focusing at something on the ground, the horse is gonna be like, what is that over there? And that's a lot of the reason why horses stop at jumps. I can't tell you how many times I've gone flying over my horse's head because I was looking down as I was approaching the jump and the horse sensed it and they stopped. Looking down does not communicate confidence to your horse. So as I ride my horse and if I'm looking down, I can feel that they're a lot more wobbly and wiggly compared to if I'm looking up, you know, I'm sitting confidently in the saddle, I'm riding my horse forward, they're gonna be riding a lot more in a straight line compared to looking down and I randomly have to turn and things like that. So mistake number seven is getting tense on your horse when you start to get nervous. So how many of you have been walking around a corner in your house and suddenly someone jumps out and scares you and you go like that, okay? You get super tense and you freak out. So that's the same thing we basically do when we start to get nervous or anxious about something, especially when it comes to horseback riding. I know I had this horse, Pepper, I still have her. She would have these episodes where she'd just freak out and I could tell when it was coming. So whenever she started to get a little, you know, crazy and wild, I would start to get tense because I was anticipating her about to blow up. A lot of times we do that on our horses or if I'm jumping a big jump that's intimidating to me, I'm gonna get a little tense beforehand because I'm not really feeling confident in the horse to go over the jump. So what does this communicate to your horse? So think about your horse in the wild. You know, wild horses galloping around the field, all's good. Suddenly a mountain lion comes running after the herd and it jumps on one of the backs of the horses and it's like this and it's trying to bite the horse's neck. Okay, so when I'm sitting on my horse and I'm starting to get nervous and I'm pinching with my knees and I'm pulling on the reins, it feels to them like the exact same thing. So this is naturally gonna make your horse start to feel anxious and start to get worked up. Horses can feel the smallest fly landing on them. So they can also feel your heartbeat as you sit on their backs. And what horses do when they start to get nervous, I've been standing around them when this happens, I can physically see the heart beating in their veins and I can also feel it. So when they start to feel our heart beating, they're like, oh, her adrenaline's getting kicked up, so that means something's about to happen and I need to be ready. So even if you're feeling nervous or anxious on your horse, you can still position yourself to communicate confidence to your horse. So when you're tense, you know, you're squeezing with your knees, you're pulling on the reins, you're probably pitching forward. So when I wanna communicate confidence to my horse, I can sit back and relax, stretch my weight down into my heels, you know, have a hold on my reins, but I don't need to be pulling on the horse's mouth. I've already mentioned this technique in this video, but another great way to control yourself if you're feeling anxious is by breathing deep. So breathing deep will naturally just relax your body and cause you to sit back. And it's also gonna control your heart rate a little bit. So when, I, when I'm starting to feel nervous or anxious, I can focus on my breathing and that way I'm focusing on something else rather than why I'm so anxious or nervous. Mistake number eight is not keeping your legs under you as you ride your horse. So if you're riding in the correct riding position, you should be able to draw a straight line from your shoulder past your hip and down to the back of your heel. So that way your foot is staying under you and you have control of your movements a lot easier when your leg is under you. So when I put my leg not under me, I can put it this way or I can put it this way. Notice how I don't have as much control of what my body is doing. So a lot of this comes with pinching the knees. So if I'm like this, I cannot control what my upper body is doing. If I'm like this, still can't control it, and I also probably can't control my leg either. So one way you can fix this is I remember my riding instructor telling me, pretend someone is grabbing you from your hair and pulling you straight up. So that way I'm sitting up in the saddle and they're creating a straight line from my shoulder through my hip and down to my heel. So another thing you can do to help keep your legs under you and your lower leg under you is to focus on wrapping your leg around your horse. So when you do this, you can't wrap your leg around your horse if you're pitched back and you definitely can't do it if you're pitched forward. So if you can properly wrap your legs around the horse, that means you're more than likely going to be in the right riding position. So mistake number nine is riding with straight arms. 
So with the correct riding position, your elbows will be bent, your hands will be square, and your shoulders will be back. This way, you're balancing yourself over the center of your horse and helping yourself stay straight. So when I straighten my arms here, naturally look, my shoulders naturally slunch forward, right? And it's gonna cause me to kind of tip forward. So one reason I see riders riding with straight arms is because their reins are super short. And so naturally they just have to have straight arms. This is getting in the horse's mouth. You're gonna be applying unnecessary pressure. So first of all, make sure you have a decent rein length so you're not all up in your horse's mouth. And if you need to, you can follow with your arms as you ride. In this way, you're not pulling on their mouth or applying unnecessary pressure. So when you keep your elbows bent, you're gonna keep your hands even. So, so many times I see riders riding like this where their hands are uneven. But if I want even pressure on my reins, all I have to do really is bend my elbows. And then this is also gonna help me keep my shoulders back. So mistake number 10 is not knowing the one rein stop before you get on a horse. So what is the one rein stop? The one rein stop is the emergency brake for horseback riding. So if your horse is wanting to bolt, if they want to buck or rear or have a freak out, all that power that allows them to do those movements comes from their hind end. So what the one rein stop does, it disengages the horse's hind end and this takes away the power for the horse to move forward or freak out or buck or rear. So how do you do the one rein stop? It's super simple and super easy and I show it to anyone I'm putting on a horse for the first time. So what you do is as you're riding and your horse is taking off let's say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach my hand about halfway down the rein. I'm going to grip my rein and then I'm going to bring my hand back to my hip. And when I do that, you'll notice that his head just naturally turns towards my knee. So if he's taking off and moving forward and I do this, he's just going to have to step in a circle and you can see he's stepping his hind end around. So he's stepping his hind legs one in front of the other. So the only motion he can really do here is to move in a really tight circle. He can't buck, he can't rear. So this is a great thing to know before you get on a horse. This will help you feel confident in how to handle your horse if you're in a bad situation. So if you found this video helpful, you would probably enjoy another video we've done about how to improve your seat when horseback riding. So I'll put the link in the description for you to check that out. You see this mic right here? So this was bought by the money we've made from Equine Helper. So by supporting us, you're allowing us to number one, make better quality videos. Number two, reach more people and help them get their answers to the horse questions they have. So we just thank you guys so much for your support and be sure to tune in next week for our next horse video.